This is a pretty challenging question. We're given some ratio, uh, but the numerator of the ratio is itself a product of two factors, and then we have another factor in a denominator. And we're asked about the circumstances in which this whole thing will be non-negative, meaning it'll be zero or positive. We're also told that we're just interested in integer values of x. So I would definitely draw all of this on a number line, and I would put you know, x minus 2 on the left, and then four units to the right of that would be x plus 2, and then another unit to the right of that would be x plus 3. Now we're told that this expression is at least zero, so I wonder under what circumstances would it be exactly zero? This ratio will be zero as long as the numerator is zero, and the numerator will be zero as long as at least one of those factors is zero. So under what circumstances would those factors be zero? Either where uh, x is negative two or where x is negative three. So those are two solutions already. Now the other situation I need to think about is where the, that whole expression is positive. Uh, so that's a little bit more complicated and we'll do that right after the intro. So under what circumstances would this ratio be positive? That would happen if all three factors are positive, so x minus 2 is positive, x plus 2 is positive, and x plus 3 is positive. In other words, going back to our number line, we'd put 0 somewhere to the left of x minus 2. And the other scenario we'd have to think about is where two of the factors are negative and one is positive. That's the, other, that's the only other way that you'd get a positive ratio overall. But if two of them are negative and one of them is positive, which two would be negative and which one would be positive? Look at our number line again. The positive one would have to be x plus 3, and then that would mean that x plus 2 is negative. But if, if they're integers, how could consecutive integers, I mean the, the distance between x plus 2 and x plus 3 is just one unit, how can consecutive integers be on opposite sides of 0? That's impossible. So this whole scenario is uh, not possible. And we can just focus on the scenario where all three of them are positive. So going back to that scenario where all three of them are positive and zero sits somewhere to the left of x minus two on the number line, looking at the question, we're only interested in solutions that are less than five. So if zero is to the left of x minus two, that means that x minus two is at least one, which means x is at least three because x is two units to the right of x minus two. So x equals three, and then also x equals four, if we were to move zero further to the left, uh, those are the two solutions under five. Anything beyond that, you'd, you'd be getting to x equals five and beyond. So in the end of the day, what are our solutions? I'm looking back at my paper, I had there a negative two and a negative three, and now we also have a three and a four, and that's it. So I'm counting a total of four possible values of x to uh, solve this inequality. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.